Well, on to another subject, which is our best in class segment. We feature a portfolio manager who outperformed 99% of her peers last year. The Evergreen Diversified Capital Builder Fund rallied more than 40% in 2009, outpacing the S&P by 15%. Margie Patel manages that fund and joins us now from Evergreen Investments in Boston. Margie, good to have you back on the program. Nice to see you. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, now, uh, for those of the, of the for those who aren't familiar with your fund, you have a mixture of debt and equity. You have more equity than debt. Uh, we've been seeing this debate here, talking about the equity markets. We've been seeing this debate about whether or not, so far in this market, you want to go long on defensives or you want to go long on cyclicals. Now, you have made your money betting on the latter. Is that going to hold? Yes, I think it's still the cyclicals are going to lead the market because the economy is doing better here. The developing markets are going strong, so I think that's where the best growth is going to be. And yet, we just talked to somebody like Gary Schilling, who is a big bear on this market. He's, you know, he says, stay away from equities right now. He talks about the overhang we're seeing in the economy, the overhang in joblessness, in inventories, in housing. How would that make cyclicals a good play, though, in that environment? Well, actually, the very high jobless is the other side of the coin of how much business has cut back their labor costs, so that if they have just a little bit of revenue growth, they're going to have very, very strong profit growth. And typically, when you look at cycles, unemployment is a lagging indicator. First come profits and sales, and then companies get around to hiring more people. So I think that the momentum of the economy is very strong. There's liquidity. Risk-free rates are very low. Companies are able to borrow and invest. And the developing markets are going very, very strong. A lot of companies have exposure there. So I think you have to be more optimistic about the strength of the economy going forward. And that is reflected in your holdings. Uh, Freeport McMoran, U.S. Bank Corp, Monsanto, uh, some of the holdings, they're in your top 10 uh, in your funds. Part of, though, the appeal of these stocks uh, from last year, though, was the fact that they've been beaten down so much. And so they were so cheap that you wanted to get in. They're not as beaten down anymore. So do you still want to get into those stocks? Well, I think if you look ahead, yes, so many stocks, almost all stocks, were undervalued last year because we had a liquidity crisis. But when you look forward at what companies have a unique proprietary position in the marketplace, control scarce assets, which Monsanto and Freeport do, and have enduring demand because they have products that will be needed to uh, really to raise standard of living around the world, there's still great holdings, I think, going forward. But are you going to make the same gains, though, as you saw in the last 12 months? Well, probably not. That was a pretty good year. But I think this year will turn out to be comfortably in double-digit returns. Uh, that means at least 10 percent, maybe 15 percent, maybe even 20 percent. Because the alternative, if I'm wrong, the alternative is that uh, interest rates are very low. I don't think they're going to go up very much. So at a minimum, I think we'll make more than if we were in, say, treasuries or money markets, something like that. Okay. I think it'll, they'll still be, the risk taker will be rewarded.